Last year, Sierra released the first of a series of Gabriel Knight mysteries, The Sins of the Fathers. This New Orleans-based adventure is still quite popular, providing a thoughtful and subtle horror experience as well as a truly challenging game. This fall, the sequel will finally arrive. It's called The Beast Within, and while it also stars Shadowhunter Knight and his assistant Grace Nakamura, players are in for more than a few surprises. The most obvious difference between The Beast Within and its predecessor is visual style. The game will be jam-packed with photorealistic environments captured on location in Germany. The characters are all digitized actors as well. Sierra's Jane Jensen, the writer and designer of the Gabriel Knight series, explains. Phantasmagoria spent $4 million building that studio, basically, and uh, pioneering that kind of technology, and we're, we're using it all. Yeah. In fact, we were able to take advantage of a lot of things they learned in the process. So the technology is certainly cutting edge for Sierra. Like the first Gabriel Knight adventure, the story is divided into chapters instead of days. The player alternates control between Gabriel and Grace each chapter. The title character will be played by Dean Erickson, who has been seen in a few soaps and an episode of Frasier. We spent a lot of time trying to cast Gabriel Knight, and I'm really happy with the actor that we've yeah. gotten. He's, he's totally Gabriel. I mean, he walks in the room and I'm like flattened because yeah. it's like a figment of my imagination has appeared from nowhere. The focus of Sins of the Fathers was voodoo activity in the French Quarter, but in The Beast Within, Gabriel travels to his ancestral homeland, the part of Germany formerly known as Bavaria. We play Gabriel on a case in Munich. So he's in the big city, and he's investigating a series of killings. The bodies have been found mutilated by an animal, and um, there were a pair of wolves, male and female, that escaped from the local zoo in Munich. And the police and the papers are blaming these killings on these wolves. But as is usually the case in this sort of story, the simplest explanation is almost definitely the wrong one. Eventually, he begins to suspect that, of course, the zoo wolves aren't doing the killings at all, and, and in fact, but, but their, their disappearance is obviously important. You know, were they kidnapped? Is this mm -hmm. a plot? You know, is this a cover-up? Gabriel's investigations lead him to a strange hunting club that still insists on referring to its surrounding location as Bavaria. The hunt club is a you know, high testosterone place. It's, right. They actually have this mystical philosophy about getting back to their primal nature and thereby gaining supernatural powers. And they're also very, very hedonistic. The whole philosophy is whatever's natural, you know. So um, there's a lot of sexual sensuality in the club, a lot of um, gluttony. And you know, a lot of, of that kind of flavor. And of course, being Gabriel, he's very attracted to all of this. So while Gabriel is starting to give way to the beast within, what's going on with the lovely Grace Nakamura? Meanwhile, Grace, who you play in chapters two and four, is supposedly doing background research on werewolves for Gabriel. Her sections are actually much more gothic romantic. She gets involved in historical research. as a, a famous werewolf trial that she investigates. And she finds out that there may have been a link between King Ludwig II of Bavaria, who's a real person, and werewolves. So she's investigating him, and she goes around Bavaria. She can go to his castles. Of course, we're setting up a lot of mysterious circumstances, which really were true about his life. Come Chapter 6, Gabriel and Grace are reunited with a common goal as the mysteries of the Hunt Club and King Ludwig have developed an intriguing connection with a lost Wagner opera. The final chapter takes place entirely in this beautiful opera house. The entire opera has actually been composed by Robert Holmes, who was also responsible for the atmospheric music in Sins of the Fathers. While the word cinematic has been bandied around quite a lot in the industry, The Beast Within actually seems more ambitious than most movies. The principal filming was overseen by Hollywood director Will Binder. There are over 80 locations and more than 100 color-saturated photographic backgrounds. The final product will probably take up at least six CD-ROMs, one for each chapter. There's a lot, a lot of things to do. You know, there's a lot of material to read. There's a lot of, you know, there's diaries and there's leads to follow and there's a lot of places to go and there's a lot of people to talk to and there's, there's a lot of things to see and do.